Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another episode of In the Hunt. As you just saw, we are at Super Potato, this time in Ikebukuro, Tokyo. And check this out. We have Mario just outside the entrance loaded with the light gun. And that's something that I really like about this shop is all the crazy decor that they had. And here we have the Egret 2 Mini Arcade Unit by Taito. Um, you know, I definitely would like to add this to my collection, and I hope to do so once it kind of sees a price drop. But from what I've seen, it seems to be of quality, and I do like the selection of titles that are uh, currently available for it. And I wanted to give a special thanks to the management and staff for allowing me to film here. As a matter of fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take a walkthrough of the location so you can kind of get a sense of everything that they had in stock, which was definitely quite a bit. Now, on the issue of pricing, you know, pricing is just going to vary from person to person. So I'll leave it up to you guys to determine if it's fair or if it's not fair or reasonable and whatnot. And then also it being in Japan, it's definitely tight in here. And I want to say some of the spots, um, some of the areas, as, in fact, let me turn the corner here so you can kind of get what I'm talking about. Is some of these areas, the clearance is so tight, it's about less than or about two feet which is freaking crazy even I had a like uh, even I was struggling to kind of maneuver throughout uh, you know especially filming with the with the camera and whatnot but the cool thing is that you will be surrounded by all the things that we love all things gaming from the hardware to the games to even merchandise like t-shirts stickers in fact they even had a little Kirby fan to keep you cool in the summer which is definitely needed and then all sorts of decor just sprinkled throughout the shop which uh, really gives it a nice touch and it could be overstimulating, so definitely make sure you come here on a full stomach so you're not spending like crazy. <laughs> and definitely come with the list, you know, or not, you know, I guess whatever. Whatever floats your boat. But up top, we have Mario here. We have the little Robo unit there. And then the Neo Geo CD, so definitely uh, keep a lookout. And then we have like these old school RC Mario Kart units, which uh, I had no idea existed. And then here, we have a face hugger next to a huge freaking plushie doll. I really like that face hugger next to this plushie doll, this humongous plushie doll. In fact, it's probably one of the bigger ones that I've seen of Mario. But down below that, we have PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita titles. Not too much, um, but you know, this is more, uh, more of a retro shop and that's a little bit, you know, more new school. And then we have some Wii titles and across from that, we have are guidebooks all sorts of guidebooks and I'm assuming these are guidebooks some of these could be actually magazines but if you guys are into collecting these things definitely uh, know that they have a lot of this stuff in stock but anyhow we're gonna make our way back to the entrance and we can see a couple of virtual boys complete in the box and then they were kind enough to open the case here so we're gonna have a closer look and we have Super Famicom titles up top there we have 32,000 for the Ninja Warriors definitely not cheap and then we have Game Boy titles in the middle there. And then down below that, we have Game Boy Advance. And then we start moving into the hardware that they had in stock. In fact, down below, they had a collector's edition of Blood uh, Bloodstained, which I kind of missed. And then there seems to be some kind of uh, special edition Game Boy there that's just coming in um, slightly less. A Game Boy Lite coming in at slightly less than 2000 bucks. Freaking expensive, that one. And then we have a couple of uh, Nintendo titles here. We have the Punisher and Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Loose Famicom cards, all sorts of stuff. Definitely feel free to pause as we're just kind of moving along as there's a lot to see here. We have the boxed Famicom games. And then we have the loose titles as well as at the very, very bottom, we have the disc system games. Next to an Atari Lynx there that's coming in at 12,000 yen. And then here we have the boxed games. We have Metal Gear, we have the Flintstones, Castlevania 3, and then clear in the back, we have Batman there coming in at 32,000 yen. Anyhow, let's go ahead and make our way to the next display case. Now, this one is going to be more uh, Sega heavy, Neo Geo, Wonder Swan, MSX, and a few other uh, systems. But we have Sparkster, the Rocket Knight Adventures 2 coming in at 38,000 yen. Next to that, we have Captain Lang at 41,000 yen. And then we have Contra Hardcore for 41,000 yen. But if you think that's expensive, hold your horses because actually we have <laughs> we have Eliminate Down coming in at like 1,300 bucks. Definitely expensive, that one. And that's just how it goes. You know, the Mega Drive didn't have the same uh, following that the Super Famicom did. So less games, higher demand. Of course, everything's going to be a lot pricier. But we have Gunstar Heroes for 8,000 yen. 
definitely love that game and it's probably one of the better run and gun games of its generation. It still holds up today, highly recommended that one. And then in the back here we have Michael Jackson's Moonwalker coming in at 14,000 yen. Haven't actually played that one but from what I've seen it might be a little bit of an interesting title. And then down below we have the MSX games. Quite a bit in stock here. I'm not too familiar with this system, but they do have it as you can see. And I believe some of these titles are actually uh, factory sealed, those ones with the red tape there. And then we have a couple of Master System games next to the Game Gear games. Now here in the box, we have Monster World coming in at 10,000 yen. Next to that, I believe this is Shinobi. And I gotta say, whatever this is, freaking awesome cover. Freaking love that. And then we have the Wonder Swan systems, which eventually one day I will pick one up because I want to get Makaimura, which is actually clear in the back over there. And they also had Klonoa. Now, Klonoa um, is going to be getting a collection out uh, this summer for all the modern consoles, but I believe the Wonder Swan titles will not be a part of that collection. At least that's how I understand it. And then down below, we have the PC games next to the Neo Geo games. In fact, we have a couple of Neo Geo pockets there, all at about, uh, all at about a, a little bit less than 100 bucks, more or less. We have Weapon Lord there. And some of these titles are definitely in the thousands. I mean, we have like 3,000 bucks. So you definitely, you know, collecting for the Neo Geo AES, you definitely want to have uh, some steep pockets in here if you're going for a complete collection. And then here we're going to move into some hardware. This one is more uh, focused on the Nintendo goods. But down below, we have a couple of Xbox 360s, a 3DO, and a couple of Neo Geo consoles. Now these ones are without the box, but 12,980 yen. And then next to that, we have one for 10,000 yen. But usually with these, um, if it's missing the AC adapter, now I'm not sure if it is or not, I believe it does have it included, but if it is missing the AC adapter, it's probably not worth getting because that thing is kind of hard to track down. And it's so specific, which is kind of annoying. But we have a couple of top loaders of the Famicom, the second revision and the original. And some of these are modded with the composite video out. And then here is just a, a little bit of a, a little end cap here just kind of showing a few uh, memory cards, a couple or a variety of controllers for the Sega Saturn, uh, well for a number of Sega systems as well as a, a couple of uh, Microsoft Xbox controllers. And then we're going to make our way down to this other section, more hardware. I just kind of love how they have all these arcade sticks kind of thrown about as I love to like scrounge around for stuff. But great to see all this Sega hardware. Look at this. Mega Drive, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, and then up above, we're going to see that they have all the boxed goods. You know, we have Neo Geo CD, Sega CD, the Master System, and of course, the V Saturn. And the V Saturn, I actually have the Model 2 variant. And on the topic of Saturn, that's where we're going to start our, uh, our little showcase of the games. And unfortunately, Tokyo seems to be drying up with Sega Saturn games. Now, you're still going to be able to find a lot of the common stuff, but it's not in abundance as it once was, especially when I arrived to Japan. It was just all sorts of Sega goodness. But I wonder if that has to do with like Corona or them holding back stock. But they did have this brand new factory sealed adult game by Sammy coming in at 3,278 yen. Not really sure what this is about, but it seems to be some kind of paradise volume type of game. But for when you can see those pictures, they don't really look uh, they don't look too uh, too uh, too provocative, at least in today's uh, day and age. And then up above, we have uh, a little bit of merchandising. Now, these things are kind of nice, especially these controllers, as they can add a little bit of flavor to the game room. And then, of course, a few uh, Saturn controllers, with the more interesting one being this Acid Grip X. Haven't actually used this one, but I wonder if it's any com if, if it's comfortable at all. But then we have the Sarah Bryant plushie next to Jeffrey and Jackie. Definitely love seeing this this type of stuff, as I am a big fan of Virtual Fighter. And then we're gonna make our way into the Sega Dreamcast. Now, this is another section which is a little bit dry, and uh, it's kind of something that I noticed at most shops here in Tokyo, at least the ones that I frequent. And then we have uh, Star Gladiator 2 coming in at 2,838 yen. Freaking love this game. I actually have a copy of this, and uh, this is one that I can definitely recommend if you like these uh, quirky 3D fighters by Capcom. And then we have Capcom vs. SNK Pro, another title that I actually recently picked up 
adds a few new characters and a couple uh, rebalancing things. And then not too much on the Neo Geo outside of the, case, uh, the cases here, but nothing out of the ordinary. We're going to make our way into the PC engine. Another section which is, uh, I want to say there's other shops that definitely have a lot more in stock, but we'll have a, a quick glance here at what they did have in stock. One of the more interesting things is going to be these controllers. We have the Blaster, the Avenue Pad 6, and the Commander. Now the Blaster and the Avenue Pad 6 don't look comfortable at all, but at least the Avenue Pad 6 and the Commander have uh, the buttons needed to play uh, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition here coming in at 1,848 yen. And then we have, of course, our Type 2. This is a great game, um, and I freaking love that cover. And then up above, we have this Super System card. Next to a couple of PC Engine Duo RX systems. Now, I'm not really sure what the main difference between this and the regular Duo is. But, so if anybody knows, maybe you can fill us in in the comments down below. And I just wanted to show off this Shinobi cover. kind of reminds me of that uh, American Ninja uh, freaking 80s movie. But I freaking love that cover. Looks freaking awesome. And then here down below, we have the 3DO titles. Not, not a whole lot in stock. I would like to try this Mega Race. Um, just more curious, uh, just kind of curious about it. And then we have Twinkle Knights. Now, this is another game like the Sega Saturn title. It is an adult rated game, and I'm not sure why as it. It seems kind of goofy at just, just looking at the cover there. And it seems to be some kind of like puzzle game or some kind of FMV game, which I wouldn't be surprised. Anyhow, let's make our way into the PlayStation 1 section. Now, this uh, things are going to get a little bit beefier here. And, you know, as I looked through this section, there was nothing really that stood out to me. But nonetheless, we'll have a closer, uh, a brief look at what they did have. And I think one of the more interesting things was this uh, Symphony of the Night, the best collection, um, coming in at 2,288 yen. And then we have Star Gladiator Episode 1, The Final Crusade at 198 yen. That's pretty much a steal. That's pretty much $1.50. And this game is freaking awesome, although it is a bit easy. At least I think the AI is a little bit dumb. But uh, we have the PlayStation 2 section. And then we have the Virtua Stick for the PS2, which is definitely news to me. Coming in at 12,980 yen. Beautiful looking stick. One that um, if it was cheaper, I probably would have picked it up. But caught me off guard there. And then I forget the name of this uh, this character. It's an old manga, and I, I always see it, and I always forget the name, but they had it there for the PlayStation 2. And they also had this... Uh, I'm not sure if this is a survival horror game or like a horror visual novel type of game, but definitely like that cover. And judging from the screenshots, I, I believe it is kind of some kind of a survival horror game. But down below, we have the Sega Ages games. You know, we have Galaxy Force 2, Panzer Dragoon... Uh, Alien Syndrome and Virtua Racing. Now, Virtua Racing, I actually have a copy coming for the Sega Saturn. I have it on the Nintendo Switch, but I would love to play it on the PS2 as a kind of nerd like that, just like to try all the different versions. And then we have a couple of uh, goodies there for uh, all things SNK. And we have the Neo Geo Mini here, but they also had quite a bit of SNK uh, games for the PlayStation 2. So it's kind of like a little... Uh, a little a little uh, section uh, dedicated to all things SNK here I would like to try mark of the wolves for uh, the PlayStation 2 I hear it's a bit better than the Dreamcast version as that version can kind of kill the laser on the Dreamcast and then we have Metal Slug 5 here this is a standalone release also a part of, me of the Metal Slug anthology but a lot of those games did get standalone releases for the PS2 and then we're going to make our way into the Game Boy games. And at first glance, it seems like they have quite a bit in stock. But as you can see, uh, some of these peg hooks only have one game on the, on, on the hook. But definitely far more than I could actually show in one go. But nice to see that they have that section. And then here we have this 20th anniversary Famicom collection for... This is like about 500 bucks, and I have no idea what this could be. So if anybody knows, that would be kind of interesting to get more info on that. Then we have the Hyper Boy by Konami, 7,678 yen next to a couple of Game Boys, one complete in the box. Uh, at least I'm assuming it's complete in the box. And then here we have one that's just kind of a, just a standalone unit. And as is customary, we're going to put this thing under the light so we can get a closer view. This is coming in at 6,028 uh, yen, which is about 50 bucks, I think. I'm just kind of guessing. And that's not too bad of a price for a working Game Boy. 
and then here we'll make our way into the Famicom. Again, not a system that I collect for, but I absolutely love seeing the different color schemes for that they have going on. Very colorful, these cards, as well as some of them have a, like a totally different molding. And then we have the twin Famicom uh, console by Sharp. These are a bit pricey, but you know, if you're a collector of all things Famicom, Nintendo, that's definitely uh, something worth looking into. And then we're going to make our way into the Super Famicom section here. We're going to start with the complete in box games. We have Outer World there, which that's one game that I haven't tried yet, but it's been on my radar for years. And uh, we have a couple of Final Fight games, uh, Chomakai Mura, freaking awesome game. And then we have uh, Street Fighter 2, and then a couple of uh, Mega Man X games, and Mega Man 7, which I recently picked up for 500 yen, not too bad of a price that. And then we have the loose cards. And... Just a lot of stuff that you would expect to see, you know, we have Super Metroid, uh, Mega Man and Baz, and then more uh, Mega Man X games, and then more, of course, first party titles for the Super Famicom. So quite a bit in stock, and you can spend uh, quite a bit of time here, and and then, you know, just, uh, but the Famic uh, Super Famicom is not something that I'm really collecting for at the moment and then as you saw there we had a couple of links there i actually picked up the wind walker version uh, a few months ago freaking love that little figurine anyhow let's go ahead and make our way to the nintendo 64 section um down beneath that they have the nintendo gamecube section and guys i completely forgot to get a few uh detailed shots of what they had in stock so that unfortunately that's all that we're going to get for the gamecube but for the n64 it's pretty much everything that you would expect to see we have this controller here coming in at 2750 yen and that is actually in pretty good condition condition considering it's a late 90s uh stock there but yeah no surprises here a lot of these boxes are in pretty good shape and if you really dig around you could probably find them cheaper elsewhere but sometimes you know getting it where you're at will will save you time and money anyhow this was my favorite uh section of the store the display case for PS2, PS1, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, PC Engine, and a couple of soundtracks that we're going to have a closer look at. But just quite a bit of quite a bit of stuff in stock. You know, we have a uh, we have this Steel Feather for the PlayStation One coming in at eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-eight yen, and this is this is a title that I only recently uh, learned about, but I don't know too much about it. But we have a couple or a few shmups there for the PlayStation One, including In the Hunt. And we have Chun Li here kind of protecting this uh, Sega Saturn inspired PlayStation 2 controller, which I've seen before. Definitely nice to see that again. And then we have a few, uh, a few more PlayStation 1 titles, a few of them being from the Wizardry series. But quite a bit there for the PlayStation 1. And the stock is always changing. And then we have here, we have the PlayStation 2 titles. I wish I would have gotten more close up shots of this stuff, but. You know, time was uh, time was running thin, and I wanted to make sure to get uh, to focus on a few other consoles like the PC Engine. Quite a bit of uh, PC Engine stock here, and we're gonna have a closer look. Of course, we have Gradius 2 Gopher, which I haven't played the PC Engine uh, variant, but they had uh, the core graphics here, which I actually picked up not too long ago at a, at a hard off for about 8,000 yen, and that was a pretty good buy. I felt. As this, uh, as this system is loaded with quite a bit of uh, gaming treasure. We have Superstar Soldier, and then we have Shinobi. I hear this isn't as good as the, the original releases, but uh, kind of interesting to see it with the new coat of paint. And then we have the Bonk Games and Splatterhouse. Freaking love that game coming in at 3,278. And then here we have uh, the PC Engine uh, CD-ROM games. We have Brandish. Now this one requires the arcade CD-ROM. So that one could be uh, could be visually pleasing. And then we have this, another adult game coming in at 15,000 yen. So about 140 bucks more or less. I wonder what that one is about. And then we have Winds of Thunder, 12,980 yen. Freaking awesome cover. I mean, just look at that thing. That one is also available on, uh, on the PlayStation Network for far less. And then we have 39,000 yen for Terra Cresta 2. Freaking pricey. And then we have Soldier Blade there for 24000 So definitely uh, a few pricey titles there for the PC Engine. And then we're going to make our way down to the Sega Saturn. Freaking love the Sega Saturn. And they had quite a bit of things uh, in stock that I would have liked to have purchased. Like that Skull Fang there in the back. Definitely want to get a lot of the shmups there. They have Hyper Duel, Metal Slug, Cotton Boomerang, Cotton 2. 
And then of course, uh, Thunder Force 5, the special pack in the back there. And then here we have this uh, Chomakaimura inspired puzzle game, brand new coming in at 14,000 yen. Uh, now this one I haven't played, but it has a freaking awesome soundtrack. So if you haven't listened to it, you know, go ahead, uh, definitely YouTube it as uh, some of the tunes in that puzzle game are freaking cool. But yeah, great to see all this, uh, all this Sega Saturn goodness here behind the case. But yeah, definitely, definitely not cheap. I believe, uh, yeah, I have a copy of that Gun Frontier, which the Sega Saturn version isn't that great. And then we have Three Dirty Dwarves and Earthworm Jim 2. They have a couple of copies of that. And then Bubble Symphony. Just kind of noticing more details here as I rewatch the footage. But then down below, forget about those prices. Look at this. About a thousand bucks for the Goemon original game soundtrack. That's freaking probably the most expensive gaming soundtrack that I've ever seen. I wonder if it's any good. And then we have this super rare Dreamcast. Look at this. Just shy of 5,000 bucks. Haven't seen this before and don't know don't know too much about it. But we're gonna make our way into the Sega Dreamcast games here. We have Border Down and Ikaruga under defeat. A couple of great shmups there. And then we have US Shinmu. Didn't sell in America, so let's rebrand it here in Japan. And a few other titles there for the Sega Dreamcast. And then up above that, we have a couple of uh, limited edition VMUs. And then the ASCII six button controller for the Dreamcast, which is absolutely necessary if you like playing fighting games on the Dreamcast. And then in the back, they have looks like they have a Code Veronica Dreamcast kind of hidden away. But anyhow, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this. Definitely had a fun time. And again, thank you to all the management and, and the staff for allowing me to film. And as always, more content is to come. So thank you for sticking around this long. And please subscribe if you haven't. Anyhow, my name is JJ. Thank you for watching Retro Rewire. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.